I'm about to show you a LinkedIn strategy that no one has ever showed you before. It's one that's helped me personally generate millions of views on the platform, get to over 30,000 followers, win over 100 clients here, and build one of the most well-known and trusted brands in my space. And it's also helped our clients win six and seven figure deals on LinkedIn, raise millions of dollars for startups, and even helped companies get acquired through posting the right type of content on LinkedIn. Now, I know there's a lot of LinkedIn strategy videos out there because LinkedIn's become so popular. There's such good organic reach, your customers are there. There is so much opportunity to build your business and brand there that I'm now seeing videos pop up all over the place. People acting like they know all about LinkedIn and a lot of them don't. So before you watch one of those videos, what I would recommend that you do is go to that person's LinkedIn profile and check to see if their content's performing. Check to see if they have client success stories and recommendations. Look at how well their profile is built out. If you go there and don't see some of the stuff that I just listed, that could be a red flag. And if you wanna hit pause real quick and go check out my profile, please do that now. The link is in the show notes in the comments. With all that being said, let's dive right into the LinkedIn strategy. First things first, if you wanna find success on LinkedIn, you gotta stop treating it like it's just a social media platform and instead start treating it for what it really is, which is the largest business community on planet Earth. And it's basically like this fun and engaging conference for business people that's just running nonstop. And let me show you exactly what I mean, because when I go through a LinkedIn strategy, I kind of break it down into these four categories, but I relate it back to the in-person conference or event that we're all used to, so this is gonna make a ton of sense. So hopefully this will simplify LinkedIn and then give you a bunch of the strategic and tactical stuff that you can actually go and use to build your business, put out great content and attract your dream clients. So if we think about LinkedIn being this live event or this conference, think about four different buckets here. All right. The first one, and I'm going to break each one of these down in depth. The first one is your content, the stuff that you post in the LinkedIn feed. I want you to start thinking about that like you're on stage. That's your keynote, that's your presentation, that's the valuable content that you're gonna share with the audience there. Number two, the comments section on LinkedIn. This could be the comments from your own content or it could be the comments from other people's content. Comparing it back to the live event, think of this as the public conversations that you're having. You're coming off stage from delivering your content to the audience. People are asking you questions. They're giving you feedback. They're sharing something with you. You see a speaker come off the stage, you ask them questions. You share insights with them. This is your comment section. Number three, on LinkedIn, you're gonna be connecting with people and messaging people pretty much daily. If we could compare this to the live event, these are the intimate conversations. This is where you're talking to maybe one or a couple of people and it's just you guys. It's not so much on the public forum anymore. A lot of times this is where it shifts from personal or general topics to uncovering if if there's an opportunity to work together. And number four, your compelling and client attracting profile, your LinkedIn profile, you gotta start thinking about this like it's the modern day business card that you're gonna deliver to your audience and to potential customers. So now that you understand a little bit more on how LinkedIn works and we've got this kind of simple comparison to make, let's break down each of the four sections. The first bucket, remember your content is like your keynote speech. It's like you being on stage. So what type of content actually works for LinkedIn? That's a good question, I'm glad you asked. You can post video content there. It's videos become much bigger over the last couple of years. If you were to talk to people a couple of years ago, they would have said, don't do video, oh my gosh, it's text only. Not today, that has changed. But I personally would recommend doing vertical video. I would take a lot of the same content that you're posting on LinkedIn and post it on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels. This is a once in a life opportunity now with social media where you can post the exact same video on multiple different platforms. And maybe you're tweaking a little bit about it or maybe you're changing the copy up. But for the most part, because we live in this short form vertical video world, a lot of that content translates to other platforms. So if you're smart, you're working that and using that to your advantage and you're able to create basically one piece of content or maybe it's a long form piece of content and you're able to break that down into tens or hundreds of thousands of views and eyeballs on you and your business by getting smart with how you film the content and post produce it and then distribute it. Now keep in mind, even if you do a video, the copy still matters because some people when they're scrolling on LinkedIn, it's not like TikTok or YouTube Shorts or Instagram Reels where you're pretty much just seeing a video and then the text is kind of secondary. On LinkedIn, the text comes up top before you get to the video. So you need to make sure that there's still a hook with the text and that there's well-written copy there that even if they didn't watch the video, they could consume the text and still get a ton of value from it. And here's a cheat code for making writing copy on LinkedIn with the video a lot easier. Take the video, plug it into Descript, transcribe it, and then use that as the copy for the video. You just gotta tweak a few things. The second type of content on LinkedIn that's performing very well right now 
is picture post with a compelling story. Hopefully that story either ties into your business somehow, maybe it's a personal journey story, or it's a client success story, but not just, hey, we worked with Johnny and this was the results, or hey, here's Susan after 90 days of working with us, we're glad to have the partnership. Not that kind of stuff. I'm talking about actually telling a story. You've got a problem, a villain, the hero in the story is the client, you're the guide, you've helped them overcome this problem or this villain, and it's got background, it's got a plot, and they overcome the problem and here's the result and now they're the hero of the story. An example is this picture post right here with me and my client Robert. His company was acquired in a multi-million dollar deal. I shared that story, but in a really compelling way with the hook up top and all that good stuff. That post alone did over 80,000 views, and about 5,000 of those were from founders, CEOs, presidents, co-founders, exactly my target audience. Which is why that one post booked us six qualified calls and two have already turned into customers. And over the next 12 months, that's six figures worth of revenue. Now I'm gonna keep it real. Here. It's not like every time I post that happens. Of course not, right? But that's the opportunity that you have. And of course, you still have text post on LinkedIn. You can write a straight up text post. You've got polls where you can get feedback and insights from your audience that can be useful at times. And then you've got carousels, which personally I do not get into, but I've seen them work really well for people on the platform. The carousel is basically like a slider where you might have anywhere from two to three all the way up to 10 to 50 slides and people can scroll past them. And hopefully again, with this, you're telling a story or leaving something to be desired. You're creating that curiosity gap from the first part to the last part, just like we would any type of content to keep people interested and engaging to get them to the end. Now on LinkedIn, I'm never gonna tell you that you can't post a certain amount of times. I'm never gonna tell you, don't post two or three times a day, that's too much. Some people do say that, but I would recommend one to two times per day because you also have to keep up with the comments and engagement and that kind of stuff too. I personally post in the morning around 7.30, 7.45 Central Standard Time, but there is no perfect time to post, I would just keep in mind when do you think your audience is up on the platform and likely to be consuming the content. As it sits right now, I typically post once per day, Monday through Friday. And just doing that, but really nailing it and getting it right has generated a significant amount of business for our company. Number two, let's talk about comments, which is the public conversations that we're having at this live event if we keep in mind this comparison. Now you definitely wanna be commenting on your own content. That's pretty self-explanatory. One, because you wanna encourage people to come back. Two, because there's potential lead opportunities and customers in the comments. Some of them just like, some of them just lurk, but some of them do comment. And then third, you wanna get insights and you wanna get ideas and answer questions for other future content. So if you post over the course of 30 days, let's just say it's one month, 30 days worth of content you've got, but I bet by day 15, you're able to go back and look at the comments, the questions people are asking, the things that they're sharing, and you're able to develop 15 more days worth of content just from that alone. And you know it's good because literally they're asking and sharing about it. You also should be commenting and engaging with other people's content. And I would say it should be a balance of people that regularly post content in the feed. You need to partner up with other creators so you can help support each other, but it's also extremely important that you comment and engage with people that are your potential customers. Again, treat it like an in-person event, would you go there and just hang out with all your homies and the people in your industry? No, you'd be shaking hands and fist pumping and doing all kinds of stuff and laughing and hanging out with your potential customers, your ideal clients. So the same exact thing on LinkedIn. You need to hunt down these people, which you can easily do in Sales Navigator or traditional LinkedIn. You can search by industry, job title, all types of different breakdowns. And you need to actively engage with those people because one, you're gonna get shown more of those people in your feed. But then when you start posting content, it's more likely to get shown in their feed because here's the deal with a LinkedIn algorithm. It's a social graph. It's not an interest-based graph like you see with TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels. What does that mean? That means it's trying to show you content from people that it thinks you want to engage with. People that you've engaged with in the past, that you've liked their content in the past, people that have engaged with you. It's trying to connect you to other people so you can start conversations. An interest-based graph like we see on TikTok, for example, it's only trying to feed you content that it thinks you're interested in. It doesn't care as much about who it's coming from it just cares about the type of content that it thinks you wanna see. Now, LinkedIn has an aspect of that too. It's not just about who you're engaging with. It's trying to feed you good content, but it's much more socially based than it is interest-based. And when you understand that, your approach to LinkedIn changes and you start to find more success. Your own content will not likely perform over time unless you engage with other people's content. Again, it's like showing up to the in-person and wanting to pass out all your business cards or speak on stage and then never talk to anyone, never shake hands, never participate or give back. 
You gotta give to receive. Number three, connect and message. Remember, this is like the private and intimate conversations at the real life event. So people ask me all the time, Alex, what's the difference between a connection on LinkedIn and a follower? Think about it this way. When you're connected to somebody, it's a two-way street. You're linked up with them, they're linked up with you, you're connected. When you follow somebody, it could be one-sided, right? So I can follow a creator, but they may not have nothing to do with me. They may not be connected with me, they may not be following me, and vice versa. People could follow me, but I may not be connected with them or following them. When you're connected to each other, you're automatically following each other. Do you need to send a connection request every time you send a connection on LinkedIn? No. But if you're strategic and trying to track down potential customers, I would advise you to use the core four strategy that we developed, which is basically just search for your ideal client, particularly on Sales Navigator, engage with their content first. You can search by posted content in the last 30 days. So you can find all the active customers that you have and then filter by if they've posted content in the last 30 days. That's crazy valuable. Three, once you've found them, you've engaged with them, then you're gonna send a connection request referencing the content that you engage with, so now you've got some context. And then lastly, you would send the message to start the conversation. Video DMs work really well on LinkedIn, so do audio DMs, and then you've got the traditional text. Just please, whatever you do, don't spam people. Don't give them this long sales pitch book a call. It's not going to work. You personalize it. You put some time and effort into it. You start a conversation with some real substance. You got a great shot. And number four, the compelling profile, which remember back to the in-person comparison is your business card. Your LinkedIn profile is the modern day business card. So if you want to turn your LinkedIn page into a client attracting profile, you do these three things. Number one, clarify everything on your page. You've got a couple of seconds where a prospect's going to land on your page. And if they don't know exactly what you do, who you do it for, and why you're unique, they're going to bounce off just like they would a bad website. So avoid the cute and fancy and sophisticated and industry jargon and just get simple and clear, but make it intriguing at the same time. Don't be boring. The second really important piece is you need social proof and recommendations and video testimonials. I would load those up in the featured content section of your LinkedIn profile. And then in the recommendation sections, make sure you've got recent recommendations from clients, not from three years ago when you were working at a different company or business. That stuff matters because when people get to your profile, they're looking to make sure you're the real deal. And the third thing on this is you need a path to conversion. So again, in your featured content section, you want to have links to take people to wherever you want them to go that will help them either consume more content, get more clear on what you do, book a call with you, visit your webpage, whatever that looks like. And if you follow all this, you are going to dominate LinkedIn and it's going to be an amazing community that you can contribute and be a part of and it will help you grow your business and your brand. And here's the thing, don't just listen to what I say in this video, go connect with me and follow me on LinkedIn and watch what I put out every single day. Watch how I move on that platform, the type of videos I put out, the type of picture posts, the stories that I tell, watch what I do. Oh, and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss any of these videos that we're putting out every single week. Until next time, we'll see you around.